Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? Today we're going to take a look at cross elasticity of demand, or Z as it is known. And cross elasticity of demand, in really simple language, is the impact of a change in the price of another product on the quantity demanded on your product. And this video, like the other videos in this series, are are assuming some prior knowledge of cross elasticity of demand. And one of the sources I'm going to use just to give credit is Jocelyn Blink and Ian Dorton's uh, IB Economics Course Companion. But cross elasticity demand is important to suppliers of certain products so that they know the nature of their product in relation to other products. A good example is like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Coca-Cola, if they change their price, is going to have an impact on the demand for Pepsi and vice versa. And so knowing the nature of your product versus other product is a very important thing for producers to know. Okay, so the equation. Well, the equation of Z, or cross-elasticity of demand, therefore, is the percentage change in the quantity demanded of good X over the percentage change in the price of good Y. The assumption here is that your product is good X, right? And you can see that um, right here we have a, a, a nice way of abbreviating that. But percentage change in the quantity demanded for good X, say Coca-Cola, over the percentage change in the price of good Y, say Pepsi-Cola. So that is the basic equation, and you should know that by now, and I'm not going to go through um, all of the definition of here, but there's a nice little thing, and this again comes from Jocelyn Blink and her course companion, and Ian Dorton's course companion. This is a really nice uh, spectrum to use in trying to understand the relationship between your particular product and another product. Okay, so Zed explains how... Your product is related to another product. And Z may be positive, the cross elasticity of demand. Once you plug in the numbers, you may end up with a positive number or you may end up with a negative number. And that's important because if it's a positive number, then we know that the product that you are selling and the product that you are analyzing are either remote substitutes. A good example of that would be like uh, maybe a burger and a pizza, right? a slice of pizza and a burger, and the price of a burger may impact the demand on pizza, but, you know, some people really like really like burgers, and no matter what the price of pizza, doesn't really matter, and vice versa. Or they're close substitutes, as my nice example is, I think anyway, of Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Okay, so the larger the positive number, the more uh, closely related the two products are in terms of being substitutes for another, the less the number is, or in the, we're going to usually say... We're usually going to say here the, the remote substitutes would be a value less than one. Okay? So, but if you do the equation and the product, and the equation comes out to be a negative number, well, then you know that your product and the other product are actually not substitutes of each other, but rather complements of each other. A complement is something that you need in order to buy something else, or you like peanut butter and jelly. Most people, if they eat peanut butter, on a sandwich, they're going to put some jelly on there, right? And those would be examples of like close complements. So if there's a change in the price of peanut butter, say it goes up, then you can imagine there's going to be a negative effect on the demand for jelly because those two things are usually eaten together. And I think the best example of something called a close complement, um, which would be a negative outcome that's greater than one, is something like a Kindle and an ebook. You know, you can't, re assuming that there are no other e-readers out there, which of course there are, but let's assume that they're not, that, that you can't read an e-book without something to read it on, which in this case would be a Kindle. So it's actually pretty interesting. Amazon actually does not make much money, if at all. When they first came out with the Kindle, they decided to sell it at cost because they, they, what they're interested in doing is selling books. And so they wanted to sell e-books and they make their profits on e-books. And so they sold their 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 Kindles at nearly cost, and they made no money on it. But you can imagine if the price of Kindles goes up, right, then that's going to have a negative impact on the, on the purchasing of eBooks. They could be something that, like, rem that are remote complements, wouldn't be something that are quite so tied together. Uh, for the United States crowd out there, I'm in Santiago, Chile, so, but in the United States out there, you know, peanut butter and jelly are super gringo, super American thing to eat, but those would be close complements. But in, along those lines, something that would be sort of a remote complement would be something like peanut butter and honey, because honey has other purposes, and you know, maybe people don't necessarily like honey and peanut butter together, but some people do, so they would be remotely uh, complementary of one another, okay? So all of this is an important information for suppliers, because they're going to want to know what the relationship is between their product and other products in the marketplace. 
Okay, so I hope this video was informative. I tried to keep it short and, and just try to explain the ideas behind cross elasticity of demand and Z. Of course, I'm assuming that you know these terms, you understand how to define them, and the purpose of the video is to add clarity to some of the discourse that you already know. Okay, talk to you soon.